So in the last video, we were working on solving linear equations. Here, we're cranking it up a notch, and we're still focusing on linear equations, but these are rational linear equations. And if you do not remember what rational means, look at the prefix. The first five letters spell out ratio, meaning that these equations are going to have ratios or fractions in them. Now, the steps are going to be exactly the same as the linear equations, so we're going to just jump right into some examples here. So I have two examples at this time. Again, the steps are exactly the same as linear equations. Simplify each side of the equation individually. Move things about the equal sign by doing opposite operations, and that should give you your solution, and then you can check your final answer from there. So at this point, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can work both of these examples on your own. Okay, let's start with example one. To isolate my x variable, I need to eliminate my negative 3 halves. And my opposite operation here is to add 3 halves to both sides of this equation. Because when I do that on the left-hand side, my negative 3 halves and my positive 3 halves cancels out. That does give me my x isolated, but I still need to simplify this here on my right-hand side. We all know that we add fractions by finding a least common denominator, and the LCD between 3 and 2 is 6. So I multiply my right fraction by 3 over 3, and I multiply my left fraction by 2 over 2. That gives me 8 over 6 plus 9 over 6. And adding my numerator gives me 17 over 6. So I have my x isolated. I have my number simplified completely, which means I have my solution to this problem. Now, we're moving on to step number three, which is check the solution. I'm going to write out the steps for you, but I'm not going to walk you through them step by step, because again, this is something that you should definitely be doing on your own. So you can see that I have checked it over here. I did it by substituting in my solution in for my x variable. I found a common denominator of 6, added those together, gives me 8 over 6, and reduces that, and that gave me what I was looking for, which is 4 thirds. So that just double checks that I have the correct solution here. So I have solved example 1. Let's move over to example 2. And there is quite a few ways I can start this problem, but I'm going to do this the simplest way I know how, meaning I'm going to cancel out the most things at once that I can. On the right, I'm trying to isolate my x, and right now I have a 4 seventh bothering it. So the way that I can do that is my opposite operations. Really, I can rewrite this as 4 seven times x. So to get rid of this is I would need to divide by 4 sevenths, and we know that we divide fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal. So the easiest way to start this problem is to multiply by the reciprocal here, and we know if I do it on one side, then I'm going to have to do it on the other side as well. Now, on the right, my 7 divided by 7 cancel out, my 4 divided by 4 cancel out, so I do have my x variable isolated. On the left, I want to reduce, always reduce before you multiply. I can think about this negative 12 as it over 1. Then I can divide negative 12 over 4. So reduce both of those by 4. 4 divided by itself gives you 1. And negative 12 divided by 4 gives you a negative 3. So multiplying the top, 7 times negative 3 gives me a negative 21. On the bottom, all I have left is 1 times 1. So I do not need to put that in the denominator at all. So I do have my x isolated, which means I have my final answer. 
So that means I need to check my solution here. I will brief you through the steps very quickly, but not walk you through them step by step. So this check was a very simple one. I substitute in my solution of negative 21 in for my x variable here. When I did that, I reduced 21 over 7, leaving me with negative 3. And I multiply negative 3 times 4, giving me negative 12, which is what I'm looking for. So that means I do have my correct solution here. So we've worked through examples one and two. Let's crank it up a notch and let's look at a more complicated example, example three here. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can answer this one on your own. So I cannot simplify either side of the equation because I do not have like terms on either side. So I need to do this by rearranging things by opposite operation. So my first step is to add one half to both sides. That cancels it out on the left. On the right, I can add those by coming up with the least common denominator between six and two is six. So I multiply my one half by a three over three. That gives me a two thirds x on the left and a 5, 6 plus 3, 6 on the right. Let me simplify this here. 5, 6 plus 3, 6 gives me an 8, 6. And 8, 6, I can reduce both by 2, which gives me a 4 thirds. So at this point, I have 2 thirds x is equal to 4 thirds. To get rid of my 2 thirds x, I can divide by 2 thirds, or to divide fractions, we know that we multiply by the reciprocal. So the easiest way to do this here is to multiply the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by 3 halves on both sides. On the left, my 3 over 3 cancels, my 2 over 2 cancels, isolating my x variable. And on the right, my 3 over 3 cancels, and my 4 over 2 reduces to 2. So that means I have my final answer of 2. So let me check this here by substituting 2 back in. I have 2 thirds times my solution of 2 minus 1 half is equal to 5. So I multiplied my 2 thirds times 2 to give me 4 thirds. To subtract 1 half from that, I need a common denominator. So I multiplied by my missing pieces, which gives me 8 6 minus 3 6, leaving me with my final answer of 5 6, which is what I was looking for. So that means I do have my correct solution to this problem. I have one more example from here, and you can see that this example is definitely way more complicated than any other example that we've seen at this point. I'm going to stop the video here, but in my next video, I'm going to be focusing on this example one and only.